Chapter 1.5, the long-term effects of exercise on the body systems. In this video, we're going to look at the long-term effects of exercise on the muscular, cardiovascular and respiratory systems. So when we exercise, there are immediate changes that take place, okay? And we've identified these as being short-term effects of exercise, which we looked at in our previous video. Long-term effects, however, are the changes that take place as a result of regular activity, okay? So these are adaptations that take place as a result of following a training program or taking part in a sport on a regular basis. So we'll start by looking at the long-term effects on the muscular system, okay? The first adaptation that we get is an increase in muscle size, and this is known as hypertrophy. So if our muscles work against the resistance for a period of time, such as when we're following a weight training program, uh, then this will result in the muscle fibres becoming thicker, and so the size of the muscle gets bigger, okay? So this is when we see people in the gym who are working out a lot with weights, you know, they have a bigger body shape than those people who just perhaps work on, on a treadmill, work on the cardio. As a result of this bigger body shape, okay, we see uh, an increase in strength. So as a result of muscles becoming bigger, they're now able to work against larger resistances, which is particularly useful in sports such as rugby, where we want that, that power and that strength to make tackles against the opposition. We also see an increase in endurance. So following regular endurance training, the muscles are able to work for longer periods of time, which is particularly useful for activities that are of um, an aerobic nature. So things like uh, marathon running, which is low to moderate intensity and of a long duration. We also see an increase in resistance to fatigue. So fatigue is another word for tiredness. Okay, um, So regular in endurance exercise will allow, mu allow our muscles to work for longer, without actually getting tired. Moving on then, we're going to look at the long-term effects on the cardiovascular system. So the first adaptation is hypertrophy of the heart. Okay, so we've already looked at this, this particular word, hypertrophy, and as the heart is a muscle, it's a cardiac muscle, it responds to regular endurance training by becoming bigger and stronger. So, Following on from this, we see a decrease in rest and heart rate and an increase of stroke volume whilst at rest. So due to the heart being bigger because of this hypertrophy, it can pump more blood per beat, which is stroke volume. Therefore, the heart can be less in order to pump the same amount of blood around the body when at rest. So because we can pump more blood per beat, we don't need the heart to beat quite as often. We also see an increase in cardiac output. So as a result of the bigger stroke volume, due to this increase in the size of the heart, this means cardiac output is higher when we exercise as cardiac output is equal to stroke volume times by heart rate. We also have a quicker rate of recovery. So after we exercise, the time it takes the heart to return to its rest and heart rate is shorter as a bigger heart can deliver more oxygen and remove waste products more quickly. So now we'll look at the long-term effects on the respiratory system. Okay, so first of all, we see an increase in aerobic capacity. So basically, our ability to work aerobically through the use of oxygen improves considerably through regular training. We then see an increase in the strength of the respiratory muscles. Okay, so like any muscle, uh, the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles get bigger and stronger as a result of regular training. And as we've said previously, this is hypertrophy, so muscles getting bigger as a result of training. We also see an increase in tidal volume and minute ventilation during exercise. So the amount of air breathed in or out per breath increases due to regular training. And as minute volume is calculated by tidal volume multiplied by breathing rate, more air is breathed in or out per minute during exercise. We then see an increase in capillarization. So we've identified the capillaries as being important during the process of gaseous exchange, where oxygen passes from the alveoli or in the lungs into the blood through the walls of the capillaries, with carbon dioxide then passing in the opposite direction. More capillaries means more oxygen can then be delivered to the muscles because we get in uh, there's more 
opportunity to get that oxygen out of the alve alveoli into the bloodstream, which then can get to the muscles. We also have another long-term effect of exercise which we need to be aware of, and this, con or this concerns um, the skeletal system, okay? And this is an increase in bone density. So basically, this means that bones become stronger through regular training, which can help prevent osteoporosis, okay? And osteoporosis is a condition where bones become fragile or weak, okay? And obviously that has implications um, if you do suffer this particular condition because uh, your bones are gonna break considerably easier uh, than what it would be if you didn't have this condition. With the long-term effects of exercise, it's important to remember that these do not happen immediately. Okay? It's short-term effects that happen as soon as we start exercising. Long-term effects of exercise only happen um, as a result of ex regular exercise or training. Okay? These are adaptations that take time to take uh, take time to occur. Okay, They won't happen straight away. They will happen over a long period of time as a result of regular exercise or training. So what I need you to do now is fill in your flip learning map, okay? Uh, don't just fill the spaces in. Make sure you watch the video a number of times so that when you come to your next lesson, you're able to apply this knowledge and understanding into a practical sense.